pandemic or economic growth in Nigeria evidence from vector or the aggressive
uh, these variables have been earlier mentioned, three from the pandemic uh, uh, COVID-19 and two from uh, economic variables. Please, uh, uh, you can put that here. So uh, a, full understand, a full detail of uh, the literature's review uh, we decided in the full work. Uh, the knowledge gap uh, we intend to cover in this work is most uh, uh, researchers did not really look at uh, the relationship between COVID-19 and the economy. Most persons were just looking at COVID-19. But in this work, we want to do a kind of a, a collaborative study where COVID-19 and the economy we meet at the bus stop. Okay, so go to the next. Uh, the model we are using will define is a vector auto regressive uh, model. Now we chose VAR because uh, unlike uh, the previous work which we looked at ARIMA, which is a uh, various time series, at this point because we are incorporating more variables, we are now looking at it from the uh, multivariate time series. And VAR is a very uh, good tool as uh, proposed by the legendary economist uh, Christopher Sim in the 70, which won the Nobel Prize down the line. So go down and see our model specification. Okay, these are uh, basically the steps which we are going to take in the model process. Um, we test for stationarity of data. Uh, by default, most time series data are known to be non stationary. So, where the data is stationary, we have to do some uh, stationarity tests uh, to, to make the data to be stationary. I'm talking about the uh, uh, regular tests will be used to check for stationarity. Then, from there, we will determine the lag length. Then use a gradual causality test to check for causal relationship between these variables because for you to model these variables, there should be a causal relationship between them. So the F statistic gradual, yes, is used right. to check for causal relationship between interacting variables. Then from there, the bar model estimation will be done, and then uh, we check for residual diagnosis to show how adequate the model has performed before we finally go ahead and do the so the next, I have a Victoria view of what it is going to look like from start to finish. So we are going to do model identification and then look at the estimation of the model. And then at this point, we check it for adequacy. If the model is not adequate, it means we need to go back and structure the model by looking at the lags selected. And then when it is adequate enough, we can go ahead and focus. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next. Now, here we have a, a, a general overview of the representative of the VAR model. Now, what we have here is not a specific model because we don't know the lag order yet because we've not started doing analysis. But this is generally how we represent the VAR of order K. For each of the variables, you can see that the equations here are five. The first one here will be for the confirmed case. Then the second one is for the public case, the third one is for the penalty case, and then we have the partial index and then the exchange rate case. Now, this is a combination of uh, uh, the parameter of a given variable plus the uh, other variables which are part of the uh, VAR model. And you can see that the, the first summation here is uh, for the confirmed case, which goes from i equal to 1 to k. I equal to 1 to k, that is the lag order. For instance, if the lag order becomes 1, then what you're going to have there is just b 1 c t minus 1, then plus the next one. Because sometimes the lag orders may not be the same. Some may be of first order, uh, some may be of second lag order. So, but at this point, we are just generally specifying what is going to be. Uh, some persons may have some issue with my arrangement here because uh, in the actual sense, in the second line, uh, the uh, RUC is supposed to come first, but uh, my background being mathematics, I was taught that addition is not, addition is commutative. So the order of arrangement of sums does not matter. I have to make sure uh, they are all aligned in order so that we can clearly look at the behavior of each particular variable side by side. Okay, uh, you have one minute. Okay, uh, the data for the study has been carefully uh, collected. The COVID data was gotten uh, from John Hopkins University teaching hospital, as uh, NCDC was unable to give us accurate data. They were just giving us pictures, but we don't very good data. 
So we got that from John Hopkins University. However, the uh, economic data was gotten from Central Bank of Nigeria, representing the exchange rates of naira dollar and then uh, the NSE one share index. Uh, 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 statistical software, if you if you two of them, if you have like chapters on it, will be used to do all forms of numerical analysis. What will meet in my next presentation by then I should have some results to present. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. The data obtained from the hospital universities in COVID data, I was able to see in that is very important for all nations of the world is the .csv file. So all I did was I downloaded that data and then highlighted the work on Nigeria, started from it. So I did that because they provided the convergency on that point. And of course, we all know the work of is a verifiable source of data for researchers. Okay. We talked about. Okay, sorry. to introduce in this work is, uh, is basically if you look at uh, uh, these regions and find out that not much work has been done in this area trying to look at the effect of the pandemic on the Nigerian economy. So that is what this work intends to achieve. And then uh, the, our recommendation is going to help both federal and state governments to make a plan towards how to form future occurrences of pandemic because uh, the world is still evolving and we should expect events at any time. If you agree with me that during the last pandemic, we are not adequately prepared for this, probably because there was no sufficient uh, research with respect to pandemic. When Ebola came, we didn't really handle the research very well. That was why we were not prepared for pandemic. I still remember when I promised them we had to go back to search for our own hands and Now, 
only green veggies, uh, uh, medical stores, and uh, food are active. So the economy is shut down. So you measuring the effect of COVID-19. Except the post, the post COVID-19. Yes, that is why our our and not during the COVID-19. No, we have to get that 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 to get they said we should put online. As students who are paying their school fees, yeah, online. Online. and not on the variable. The variable he's talking about, the yeah. schools are sorry, please. Yeah. The variable he's talking about is the change rate. Hold on. The OCI index. This, for instance, we bought uh, vaccines and, and, and the likes. This vaccine is between the Nigerian Naira and the US dollar. What is the standard exchange rate? Two things happen Sir. within the COVID okay. pandemic okay. period, within the lockdown period. Yes. You measure the economy the growth as a post okay. and not the green lockdown. The post.
uh, particular economy variables. We are carefully selected because of the nature of their frequency. There is no daily frequency for the GDP and population. And as you notice, the, there will be no correlation if, if, uh, if, if some variables are weak and others are daily. So I have to carefully select variables that each be the same frequency for the Okay. All right. Um, we'll leave all that suggestions to you. 